Hey, 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 theatre kids, and welcome to my channel here on YouTube. If this is your first time seeing my lovely face, my name is Flora, and I'm here to bring you a bunch of wonderful stagey content here on YouTube. Now, if you know me from TikTok, this is going to be quite a fun video, I think, for you guys, as it means I get to talk in depth about one of my favourite topics, and that is the historical accuracy of the six musical costumes. Now, this will be a six part series, six for the six queens, and then if you guys like it, I'll cover the alternates as well, as this is something that I absolutely adore talking about, and I want to share what I know about these costumes with you. Of course, because this is the first video in this series, we are going to be covering Catherine of Aragon, who lasted longest, is the strongest, as she might say. So without further ado, let's discuss the historical accuracy, if you will, of Catherine of Aragon's costume in six musical. Now, quick caveat for those of you that might be about to nitpick me, I am only going to be talking about the most current version of this costume, which we can see modelled here. I don't know why I've shifted, but here we are. Okay, let's start by breaking down this costume into several different parts. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. Now, one of the first things you might notice is that this costume has a very square neckline and very big shoulders. Now, in the Tudor era, the square neckline was probably the most common one you were going to see on dresses. You saw it in a lot of portraits worn by Queen Elizabeth, who, yes, was slightly later on, but she is one of the best references we have um, in terms of portraiture when it comes to looking at historical fashion from this era. Uh, so thank you to whoever painted those pictures, because they're a great asset to people like me blathering on the internet about costuming. Um, <laughs> and then the wide shoulders as well. Now, this is a very interesting one because you could argue that women's fashion at the time wasn't seen you know, to hugely support having wider shoulders. It was more common in male fashion. Um, and that's what I think the show does beautifully. It really marriages sort of male and female fashion of the time to create these beautiful modern looking pieces whilst paying homage to their historical roots. Uh, so you do, you have these big shoulders, um, which also does help create that silhouette of a tiny waist, which was quite popular in the Tudor era. The other thing I'd really like to talk about is the fact that on the front piece here, you're going to see what I refer to a lot as lattice work. Now, if you look at architecture from the time, particularly churches um, from the Tudor era, you're going to notice this diamond pattern in a lot of their stained glass windows. And so to have it featured so prominently on Catherine of Aragon's costume, I think is really interesting, as it's not only Tudor fashion that's being brought into these costumes, but Gabriella Slater's very creatively worked in Tudor architecture as well, which you will see in some of the other queens as well later down the line. So if you'd like to check those videos out, be patient and make sure you're subscribed for more. Next, we're going to move down to the V-shaped belt that you see on this costume, which does separate the torso from the skirt. If we bring up a picture of real life Tudor fashion, you can quite easily see that it creates this V-shaped silhouette that we see quite often. Often ladies as well would wear chains and jewellery around their waist, which fell to a V shape. Um, and this costume you know, shows that off brilliantly, whilst also making it feel really contemporary and modern, which I love. And then we're going to move further down onto the two-tiered skirt. Now, if we look at examples that we have in portraiture of the fashion worn in Tudor times, you can often see that the women, I will caveat it is women of a <laughs> certain financial status, had what was called a gown or the overskirt and then that different piece of fabric hanging in the front called the kirtle. And so by having Aragon in this show wearing an open front skirt effectively, as well as having a two-tier skirt, you beautifully emulate this overskirt and kirtle design without actually making the actress have to wear a full and closed circle in the same way someone like Boleyn's actress might. By having the leotard piece underneath be made of a different fabric from the rest of the costume, again, that emulates the kirtle, which was often a different patterned fabric or a different coloured fabric wore, which was then effectively shown off between the two gaps in the overskirt, which I think, you know, again, is another really fascinating way in which Gabriella Slade has managed to bring these elements of historical Tudor fashion into these costumes. Now, another thing I'd like to touch on is the fact that Aragon wears a spiked crown, which sets them apart from the other queens, except for the caveat of Cleves, because unlike the others, she was divorced. Uh, and so these spikes on her head are assumed to represent the spikes of divorce, uh, which I think is really interesting. Another thing I like to think this represents is the fact that Aragon was royalty before she ever married Henry. 
But another thing that lots of people like to ask questions about is why Aragon was given the colour gold. Now, I feel like there's a lot of explanations for this and it is down to interpretation until Gabby Slade gives us the official word and the official answer. But some of the reasons people have come up with is because gold is most well associated with 24 karat gold and Aragon was married to Henry for 24 years. Uh, she was married to him the longest. Perhaps the gold is a nod to the length of their marriage. Another thing could be the fact that her queen inspiration is Beyonce, who is well known for wearing a lot of gold, which wouldn't be the first time that the queen inspiration has influenced the colour of the costume. Of course, we also see Aragon wearing a lot of gold jewellery, where all the other queens wear silver jewellery, perhaps a nod to the fact that she was Catholic, uh, her Catholicism you know, and loyalty to the church being a big part of her character in the show. So by using gold, as a way to represent that, if that is what it means, could potentially be very clever. Another thing to talk about is the fact that the entire costume silhouette is going to be big shoulders, small waist, and then outward sort of almost A-line flowing skirt, which was a silhouette that was very common in the Tudor era of women's dresses. They would layer up lots of different fabrics to create that effect, as well as cinching in their waist where they could. Uh, so to include that silhouette in this costume I think is very clever. It's a silhouette we actually see emulated a lot across all of the different queens, um, which I think helps allude to the fact that these are Tudor costumes. So there you have it. Despite these costumes being made from modern and sometimes unusual fabrics, they are relatively historically accurate. Accurate as in they draw from a lot of real life Tudor fashion examples to create a modern version and a modern retelling of those outfits to better suit the style of the show. Right, that's it for today's video guys, but if you enjoyed it, please, please, please smash that like button. And if you want to see the rest of this series, please subscribe down below and comment which queen you're intrigued to hear the most about when it comes to the historical details portrayed in their costumes. That's all from me today, guys. So I'll see you in the next one. Oh,